while marijuana sales reach record highs here in Colorado and more and more states around the nation legalize cannabis, some say the changes to the law can have impacts beyond those looking to light up. Brian Vicente, board member for the National Hispanic Cannabis Council, joins us live to discuss why diversity in sales is so vital. Good morning, Brian. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. Yeah, it's great to be here. Um, a group of Hispanic business owners and supporters formed the National Hispanic uh, Cannabis Council. Uh, it's partially based here, but we have uh, members across the country. And really, the point is to address the underrepresentation of U.S. Hispanics in the cannabis uh, industry. And, and, you know, in 2020, we saw uh, the cannabis industry was the fastest growing segment of the U.S. economy. There's now more cannabis industry workers than dentists in our country and, and, uh, and paramedics. And unfortunately, Hispanics have really been left behind. Um, in Colorado, we have about 5% or less of cannabis businesses that are owned by uh, people of color and Hispanics. So this organization is really formed to, to, to bring that group together to, to rally behind Hispanic businesses in the space and to promote jobs to the Hispanic population um, in the cannabis field. Yeah, I'll be frank, Brian, there's a lot of money to be made in this industry. Let's talk about wealth distribution. Why is it so important for a variety of community voices to be heard when we talk about legalization? Oh, absolutely. And this is, again, a booming sector of the economy. Um, and it's important to know our history here. I mean, largely the reason marijuana became illegal was to criminalize uh, Mexican immigrants in the United States. So. Uh, you know, there's many people, including our organization, that feel that as this um, shifts from being illegal to, to legal and uh, there's money to be made, that those individuals that have historically, um, you know, suffered, whether that's uh, you know, racially disproportionate arrests or uh, not participating in this industry in a meaningful way, really have a chance to, uh, to gain some of the windfall of this new part of the economy. Yeah, what is your group doing to help increase access to this industry for those who were disproportionately impacted by that war on drugs? Sure, so a number of things. I mean, we basically formed like the first Hispanic networking organization around cannabis uh, that's nationwide. Um, so we're promoting cannabis businesses that are owned by Hispanics. We're um, specifically targeting job fairs uh, and, and advertising them uh, to the Hispanic community to try to promote uh, Hispanics joining these these businesses. And also there's, you know, there's a bit of a cultural divide uh, in terms of how Hispanics view cannabis, whether for medical purposes or legalization. So there's an educational component to what we're doing. We're trying to reach people, you know, bilingually to explain uh, what these laws are about, uh, how medical marijuana could be useful for, for them potentially, uh, and also how they can participate in this, in this sector of the economy and, and yeah. really do the networking that needs to be done. I know capital can be a major hurdle when setting up these businesses, especially a marijuana business. What can we do to help diverse business owners have some leverage in the game and get started? Sure, so, and I, I will applaud. I mean, I think Denver and, and, and other cities and states around the country are really addressing this issue head on. They understand how important it is to diversify ownership and, and workers in this field. Uh, but capital is a giant uh, barrier to entry. Um, so I think, you know, looking to have sort of low interest loans for individuals that qualify, um, making sure that we allow for licenses that don't cost millions of dollars to enter, uh, such as delivery licenses. You know, it's much cheaper to buy a, a truck to deliver marijuana versus buying an entire store. Uh, and, and really making sure that certain number of licenses are allocated to individuals that can demonstrate you know, we're from a population that's been disproportionately impacted. Uh, and then our group, the National Hispanic uh, Cannabis Council, really hopes to connect these individuals to people with money or uh, you know, potential investors that can fuel their dreams. Yeah, last question before I let you go, Brian. I know legalization of marijuana is about much more than just money. What are your thoughts on equity laws accompanying legalization in these states? Uh, at this point, I think equity in legalization is, is absolutely crucial, and I don't think we're seeing many laws uh, pass across the country that don't include an equity provision. And, and I think that's wonderful. I mean, really, states are beginning to acknowledge that the war on drugs has been very harmful, uh, particularly to people of color, Hispanics, African-Americans, et cetera, for decades. And now that we are allowing for new licenses and we're legalizing this substance, let's not just stop arrests. Let's also make sure that those groups can participate meaningfully in this new economy. So important. Brian Vicente with the National Hispanic Cannabis Council, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.